May 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 18 from the New Testament. After this, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to depart from Rome. Paul approached them, and because he worked at the same trade, he stayed with them and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. He addressed both Jews and Greeks in the synagogue every Sabbath, attempting to persuade them. Now when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul became wholly absorbed with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. When they opposed him and reviled him, he protested by shaking out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am guiltless. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went to the house of a person named Titius Justus, a Gentile who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the president of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who heard about it believed and were baptized. The Lord said to Paul by a vision in the night, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent, because I am with you, and no one will assault you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. So he stayed there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Now while Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews attacked Paul together and brought him before the judgment seat, saying, This man is persuading people to worship God in a way contrary to the law. But just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or serious piece of villainy, I would have been justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it concerns points of disagreement about words and names and your own law, settle it yourselves. I will not be a judge of these things. Then he had them forced away from the judgment seat. So they all seized Sosthenes, the president of the synagogue, and began to beat him in front of the judgment seat. Yet none of these things were of any concern to Galileo. Paul, after staying many more days in Corinth, said farewell to the brothers and sailed away to Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He had his hair cut off at Sancria because he had made a vow. When they reached Ephesus, Paul left Priscilla and Aquila behind there, but he himself went into the synagogue and addressed the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he would not consent, but said farewell to them and added, I will come back to you again if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus, and when he arrived at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church at Jerusalem and then went down to Antioch. After he spent some time there, Paul left through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, arrived in Ephesus. He was an eloquent speaker well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and with great enthusiasm he spoke and taught accurately the facts about Jesus although he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak out fearlessly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. When Apollos wanted to cross over to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he assisted greatly those who had believed by grace, for he refuted the Jews vigorously in public debate demonstrating from the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. God, today I ask for opportunities to shake out my clothes or shake off the dust from my sandals. Not that I don't want people to hear your message, obviously far from it. But I think sometimes we fear what other people are going to think so much so that we pre-assume what they're going to say or do to us before we even get a chance to share your word or to pray for them or to sh show them some sort of kindness in your name. We never even get a chance to say, fine, 
at least I have said what God wants me to say and I am now guiltless. Blood is on your own heads. Shaking my clothes of you. We never even get to that point. Because we're so worried about what other people will think of us. We're so worried about what, what we're going to post on Facebook. What will so-and-so think? Or will this cause my friends to unfriend me? Or when the person at the checkout stand says something like they've had a really hard day instead of saying, hey, what's your name? Can I pray for you for that? We're so worried about the other people in line and what will they think if they hear me talking this way? Or we think about when we're in a group of friends and if I start talking about God, what will they think of me? Will they think I'm crazy and will they make fun of me? God, I just ask for the opportunity today for strength and fearlessness. I ask for a chance that we even get to the point of shaking the dirt off our sandals because we have gone out and told people about you with love, with kindness, praying for them, loving them, telling them about you. Sadly, I'm afraid that you are shaking your clothes out at a lot of us incredibly frustrated that you give us all these amazing opportunities to talk to people and we get so scared and so nervous and what will people think instead of what will you think about us your children who've been chosen to carry on your word to the rest of the world Paul didn't care <laughs> he loved people but it was definitely you who came first in his life without question it was you who he feared. It was you who he respected. And it was you and your words that were going to get through to people no matter what happened to him. He wasn't afraid. God, show us those opportunities today. Show us those opportunities that those little places where we can get in and talk to people, where we can get in and pray for them, where we can be brave and bold and post things in social media or in our social circles and talk about you. Make those opportunities very clear and give us the spirit, not of timidity, but of strength. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>